Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here once again for Pink and Main, and let's enjoy their Crafty Courtyard subscription, yeah, subscription box for September 2019. Now from this kit, I'm going to make five cards. I know, not more, just five. So let's first look at all of the wonderful items you're going to get in this month's kit. As always, you get the card, and this month's theme is titled Sweater Weather. And I love the card because it says, The leaves are falling and autumn is calling. It can't get here soon enough. Yes, I do like the fall. So these are your card stocks. You have this beautiful shimmer teal, beautiful burgundy, an orange, a gold, uh, a lime green, a uh, craft, and two pieces of white cardstock. So they are perfect for, for fall. As always, you get this awesome bag, uh, your project bag. You will get a uh, full-size ribbon that are leaves, your twine, both solid and uh, white and the orange, some tags in different sizes and different colors, a lot of sequins. Of course, we can't forget the pin. I love the pins. You get some brown rick rack that you can accent your cards with. Some real pretty charms um, that are in like a um, antique gold. These craft stickers. Um, so they very much intrigued me. Of course, you get your four envelopes and then your six by six paper pad um, of their papers. And of course it's called sweater, yeah, sweater weather. And these are the prints. They are double-sided and there are many prints to choose from. And in all the colors that pretty much match the cardstock, which is awesome. Get this great stencil just of leaves. And then here is our stamp set. I am loving the sentiments. We have some beautiful, an acorn and some leaves. And then those two strips actually interact with each other. So it's really cool. So I chose some Distress Oxides in Aged Mahogany, Fossilized Amber, Forest Moths, um, Walnut Stain, and Seedless Preserves. Or dusty concord maybe dusty concord i think it's dusty concord so we're going to do some ink smushing here and i'm going to do multiple layers so i really sped this up i wanted you to see the whole process here's your key for distress oxide if you want to do layers if you want to continue to do multiple layers with your oxides they are water reactive if you dry in between each layer, you will be able to minimize the colors mixing together. Again, I've got a yellow, I've got a green, I've got a purple, I've got a deep burgundy, and I have a brown. I should have a lot of mud when it comes to all of these colors. Now, the next color, of course, that I'm coming in with, I started with my fossilized amber, I'm now coming in with my forest moss. I'm not adding too much water after I'm putting down the ink onto my craft mat. Um, maybe adding three, four spritzes. If I, the more water I add, the more chance I have of this to bleed together. So you can see that was kind of a lot of water that I had with that shade. So I'm letting it dry. I'm going to use my heat tool for that. Um, as long as I let these layers dry in between, I will have very minimal mixing. I wanted more of the aged mahogany. So again, not so much water and plus I like all of these dots when I ink smush. So again, the more water you add to if you're using a watercolor, if you're using a um, distress oxide or water reactive ink. 
the more water you add, the more watercolorish it will look. The less water you add, the more spotty it will look. I really do hope that makes sense because that was a lot of talk in there. Um, so again, it's less water, more of spots, more water, more watercolor, more smush. I don't know how else to say that. It's, it's, I find, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's kind of difficult to explain. I pulled in the walnut stain and the aged mahogany, and I'm just going to town with the splatters. I want them to be all over this front card base. Now, once that's dry, I also add splatters of water and I let it dry a little bit because these inks truly do react in a different way. Like those spots there, if I let them dry completely on their own, they will look like that. So it actually gives another shade. Eventually I get impatient, so I just take off the excess water. And then I have these white spots. So I'm going to use the stencil and I'm going to place that over this panel that we've just ink smushed all over the place. Yes, I like saying that word, ink smushed. I'm going to adhere the stencil and then I'm going to bring in the black soot. I know you're all cringing right now. Go with the brown, go with the brown. No, I really wanted to go with the black soot. So I'm going to use my Nuvo blending sponges. Any sponge will do. And I'm just going to go to town with the black soot through this stencil. Could you use the brown? Absolutely you could. You could definitely use the brown. You can use one of the colors that you used to create your background panel when you did the ink smushing. Um, whatever you choose to use, but you can see the bottom right hand corner is darker than what that upper left hand corner is going to be. I'm not letting that get too dark. Once I remove the stencil, this is what we have left. So I have the fade of the leaves up on the top, and then I have them darker towards the bottom of my panel. And I really do like the way that that looks. I'm going to use my art glitter glue, and I've cut down a section from the craft cardstock, and I'm going to adhere that to my panel. The leaf panel was cut four inches by five and a quarter, and the craft panel was cut four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So we'll have a small border going around the edge. I'm sorry, that panel was cut to be four and a quarter by five and a half. My bad. So the leaves again, four inches by five and a quarter. The craft panel is going to cover the entire standard A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And all of my card bases are going to be the standard size, the standard A2 size. I'm then going to come in to each leaf and I'm going to place a dot of glue where the stem is. And there's going to be a sequin that I put there. And I'm going to be specific with the sequins that I'm using. I'm using these small purple gold looking sequins. Um, I just really like the color and I think it pulled out what we have going on there on that panel. So that was our first card. So for our next, I'm going to pull that stencil in again. I was having way too much fun with the stencil and I just love the colors of the oxides um, that I've pulled. This is one of my favorite color combinations and I learned, I watched, saw this color combination. I think it was from a Christina Warner video. I just, she did this with a watercolor painting and it was absolutely gorgeous. I think she used distress inks though. Um, but you gotta love the oxides. So I'm going to come back in with my blending brushes. Now I know somebody's going to ask me, where did I get that case? I will try to find the link. I actually cut the lid off and the squares are the perfect size to fit these Nouveau sponges. So that's how I store them. I'll try to find the link. I know it's from Amazon. Just forgive me if I can't. 
I'm just going to come in with these colors and as I go down onto my paper I'm twisting the sponge so I don't want to rub it over everything I just want these blotches of color to come in over this panel it's okay that they mix it's okay that they blend I won't get too much mud because remember these are dye and pigment inks so they do stay wet longer than a regular dye ink so these could blend together um, but I was fortunate they they didn't do it too much it was iffy there for a second but I was just having too much fun again just pushing down twisting and coming up so that the panel or the stencil will become filled so that when I remove this we have a panel now that's covered with the leaves and they're all different colors so that's something else that I liked now I was originally going to come in with some clear embossing powder two reasons one it would hold those colors and make them glossy two I wouldn't have to wait for the panel to dry <laughs> so instead instead of doing the clear I'm actually going to sprinkle some copper and gold embossing powder on these or on this panel so I'm not covering up the leaves completely I'm just giving some of the shimmer to those leaves so you will be able to still see and you can tell by it sitting there you'll still be able to see the colors of the oxides so just a very faint dusting is going on over all of those leaves and that's what our panel looks like I think it came out pretty cool I'm not sure if this one may be my favorite <laughs> I'm going to dig right into this rick rack. I'm going to cut a piece of that and I'm going to have that come down on the corner. Um, that's the only place where this is going to be. Now you could put it on the other side if you want as well, if you wanted to make it even. But I just wanted that accent to be on the one side. And yes, you're not going crazy. I have yet to use, even though this is my only second card here, or only my second card, I have not used the sentiment yet. So again, these cards can be used for any occasion. If you don't put a sentiment on, you can add the sentiment as you go, or you can just stamp something in on the inside. Or you don't need a sentiment and just write your wishes on the inside of the card as well. So there are times with all the work that we put onto the outside of our cards sometimes I just can't cover it up with a sentiment so that's what our panel looks like I secured the rickrack in the back using some double-sided tape and now I'm just gonna finish up using some double-sided tape I cut a piece of cardstock from the dark burgundy burgundy I'm sorry I can't talk tonight and that is cut four and a quarter by five and a half and the panel of the leaves again is four inches by five and a quarter inches so I'll have just a very faint or a small border going around the leaves and I think the maroon or the wine color really pulls that out and yes I cut that off I didn't show you a close-up so sorry forgot to turn the camera back on so for this next card I'm digging I'm you pulling out one of my nested circle dies because I want to use it to trace around so I'm trying to find the perfect size um, for this circle I want to create a wreath and I'm going to use all of those leaf stamps and the acorn stamp so I'm going to place this down and then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw around the outer perimeter of this die this to me is the best way to draw a circle yeah because I can't draw a straight circle to my life I'm just going to fill in the areas just to make sure that I can see the pencil line I know you probably that's very faint um, you barely want to see it I'm first going to stamp the sentiment and of course the stent the sentiment that I chose is the leaves are falling and autumn is calling 
I just love that sentiment. And I'm going to use Plum Punch by Gina K. I thought this purple would go good with the autumn colors that we have going on here. So I'm just going to make sure that's stamped. I'm going to use the same ink to stamp all of the leaves and the acorns as well. I'm not going to come in with a black um, ink to stamp all of these images out. So once that's ready, I'm going to get all of my stamps pulled, get them on my acrylic blocks, and we're going to have a ball stamping. So this I really sped up. I just wanted you to see how I was placing these. Um, there's five different leaves and I'm just stamping them in different areas. Now you can see there, I've got a small purple area there because I dropped the stamp, tried to erase it. I eventually let it go. I just stamped over it and we're going to be able to cover that. Trust me, with everything that's going on on this card, no one is going to notice that. So you keep going and we don't start over. There's always a way to cover up those happy accidents because it takes you in a different direction. So you can see I'm really filling up this wreath and I'm hovering around. Sorry about that. I'm hovering around the sentiment. Um, while I'm looking for the circle shape, you can see I'm kind of pulling it out on the two corners with some of those leaves that I set up as threes. The last stamp that I'm going to bring in is the acorn. Now some of them that you can see they're going over the leaves and that's okay. I was not in the mood to mask. I just wanted to keep on stamping um, the images on there. And I think it looks pretty good. Didn't need to mask. Now you could have, by all means, you could have used a mask um, if you didn't want to have that overhang. But I am going to use my colored pencils. Now I'm not going to, I can't keep all of the coloring in this video. As you can see, it's long enough. Um, and we're only halfway through. <laughs> um, but I do use my colored pencils for all of the images that I color in this video, actually. Um, and I chose my Prismacolor set. So I'm starting out with the acorns. I will leave just a little bit in, um, and that's the part that you will see. So I chose some golds, some oranges, reds, maroons, purples, and then of course a dark green, which I think again goes very well with all of the colors that I chose, whether it was an ink um, or the pencils. So I'm just actually going to go around. I will pull in my colorless blender once in a while, but not often. Again, I do like to let the pencils themselves blend together because they will. No matter if they're wax or oil based, they will blend together. And that's what our panel looks like. So I've got some really bright colors going on. Um, I've got some uh, bright golds um, and so forth going around this wreath. Again, I used the burgundy cardstock. I was a big fan of the burgundy cardstock. Again, that was cut four and one eighths this time um, by five and three eighths. The leaf panel was cut four by five and a quarter. I'm using some of the twine to create a bow so that I can put that down towards the bottom right hand side of the card. Once that bow is set, because I am horrible at, at tying a bow, I will use one of my glue dots to secure this in place. Once that is in place, our card will pretty much be set and good to go. I really did like the color palette um, when it came to 
this kit and that is something that I like too with the card that comes in the kit you have the color palette on there as well so if you need other items to match up to that you can certainly just take that card with you again I'm going to use my art glitter glue to set this right down on my card base the craft background so this is a three layered I have two mats for that. The craft one was cut five, excuse me, four and a quarter by five and a half. So for our next card, I have a very strong metallic feel going on because I wanted to use a couple of these charms. I wanted to use one of the leaves and a set of the acorns. So I am going, I stamped the stitched heart um, from the stamp set a couple times using Barely Beige by Simon Says. So I wanted that to be very soft, very faint. I'm going to use some of the twine to thread through the charms and I'm going to put both of those ends through the hole. So I'm not going to have a bow or anything else. I'm actually just going to thread these straight through because I just want the charms coming from the card. Once I have that pulled through, I will use again some double-sided tape to secure those ends there um, in place. So you can see it's kind of dangling from the center of that heart. Wanted to make sure I placed them in the right spot, of course, after punching the hole, of the square that I'm going to use to cut them out around. So here is this knit strip. That's what I'm going to call it. So I'm going to place the first one down. I want to make sure that I have room for this square that I want to use. I'm going to prep my stamp with a dry cloth and then I'm going to use my VersaFine ink. Now again I have a by using the charms, I just wanted to go for a complete metallic feel for this card. So when I first stamp this, I am going to stamp it a couple times with my Versamark, but I'm going to then come in with my gold embossing powder. And this is by Recollections. <clears throat> so this first layer, it's, it's, it's not a layering stamp, but it is. It's okay. It's called a layering fill in. Let's call it that. Um, so again, for the first, and I kind of smudged it with my finger, so I'm just trying to fix it with a dry brush. I'm going to heat set that. I'm then going to put this back into my Misty and then pull out the piece that's next to it. So you have this full strip or fuller strip of the knit stitches and then there's this other stitch so you see those openings um, in my gold strip there this next strip that I'm going to stamp over this in fills in those gaps so it's like a fill-in stamp instead of a layering stamp so again I'm gonna stamp this a couple times just to make sure that I have good coverage and in case I'm off, I am slightly off in this. Um, so in case it's an uneven edge, I'll be able to get everything. For this layer, I'm going to use my copper by Recollections. Once that's heat set, I'm just going to use my dry cloth again to clean up the area. And now I'm going to stamp the sentiment. The sentiment that I chose is ever so thankful for you. And I'm going to use my copper embossing powder for that as well. Again, the only stamping I'm doing is with my Versamark ink. I'm not using any inks, meaning color inks. This is all embossing powders that I wanted to use. Again, going for that metallic feel and that metallic look. After that's heat set, I'm then going to cut out the panel where the heart and the charms are. So I'm just going to cut it down. 
because that's actually going to sit within the opening. And then I am going to prop up the main panel up using some double-sided foam tape. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm only going to use one layer. I'm not going to turn it into a shaker. The charms will shake, but it's not going to be a true shaker card. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to trim off around the edges for those that are for those areas that are sticking up. And this panel that I placed on top of that is already cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back and then I'm going to adhere this onto my standard A2 size card base. And that is our card. So for our last card, I had to use these craft stickers. They are just, they're a nice weight. They're not thin. So I came up with an idea. So I set the whole panel into my stamp positioning tool and I'm going to stamp my images. Now, what I'm going to use to stamp with, except for the sentiment, everything else is going to be stamped using my ink on three fade out. So I want to do some no line coloring and again I'm going to use the same colors that I used before in my previous on the wreath I'm going to use those same colors for here so and I'll have color charts um, on my blog if you're interested on the colors that I used so again I am going to use my ink on three fade out this is a wonderful ink. It truly does disappear after a while um, after you stamped with it. So it's really kind of cool. This is like the second time I've used this. I've been playing with it because usually I do use either Simon Says Fog or Barely There or the Gina K light colors. Um, I know she's got, <clears throat> excuse me, a Barely There. She's got a, a Morning Glow. Um, and a skeleton leaves um, and a whisper and they are great as well they are wonderful for no line coloring um, but I am finding I am a fan of this ink on three it is very nice to work with and I think it stamps very well it gives you some very nice bold colors um, the line you can really see the line and then eventually it just it does it just goes away I'm going to use my charcoal brown from Gina K for my sentiment and I have that stamped in the bottom. Now again, I did do all the coloring offline. Um, this didn't take long, but here what I'm showing is with these is to give them some dimension or maybe even texture. I'm taking my dark brown colored pencil and I'm going around the edge of the sticker um, and I'm coming in a very slight amount just to give it an edge so it's going to look like that center piece is raised and then the back the back piece is like a mat that it's sitting on <clears throat> and I'm going to do that for each one of these pieces again it just gives them a little bit of dimension um, and a little bit of interest make them look like they're wood plaques that's what I was going for with that so even on the curved ones, I am going to come in with that same edging. So this is what our stickers look like. Um, I think they came out pretty cool. I'm going to take a panel um, and I'm going to ink around. You knew the vintage photo was coming in, right? It's, I'm surprised it lasted this long away out of the video. So I'm going to come on the edges of this piece of ivory cardstock. Um, I am not worried about it being perfectly blended, but I do want to make sure that there's a lot around the edges. I do want a nice coat of this color there. I'm going to come in with my sprayer 
and just spritz it a couple times and then I'm going to grab my towel to lift up the water that was there. So just a hint of a little bit of color where it's lighter in the center. I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to glue it down. I did cut one of the teal, a piece from the teal shimmer paper. And again, the distressed panel is cut at four inches by five and a quarter. And the teal panel is cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just cutting around these stickers just to remove some of the white border for placement. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to lay these out. And now I'm going to unpeel them and then just set them in the area where I think they're going to go. And then eventually I will press down onto the panel so that they will stick there permanently. There were a lot of, um, you could have put this, you know, many ways, but I didn't want everything centered. So I wanted those two small ones to come a little closer together and the two larger ones to kind of take on a corner that was above the sentiment. I've placed a dot of glue on top of each one and I'm first going to set down one of the flat green sequins that comes in the packet and then I'm going to pull up another one of the small sequins which is like the purplish goldish color um, and place that on top of the green sequin. Now you could have added lines to these to make them look like they were truly hanging on a wall. Um, absolutely your choice. But I just like what the sequins add to it. it. Doesn't take away from the coloring, just adds a little bit of sparkle to this. I'm going to adhere that down onto my standard A2 size card base. And that is our last card. So I do hope you enjoy the five cards that I made from the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard subscription box for September. Remember, this month's theme is sweater weather. All the information that you need to know regarding this subscription and how it works and all of the wonderful perks that you get when you subscribe will be down in the video description. So make sure you read them carefully. You don't want to miss out on the special extras that you get. The products that I used will also be linked down below as well. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and just taking this little bit of time. Okay, this long bit of time to watch my video. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe, be part of my group. But remember to hit the bell so that you know when the next video is launched. I hope everyone's having a great day, getting ready for the fall. But always remember what's most important to me. Always be creative.